25 years ago today, part of the city of Philadelphia was burnt to the ground in a massive police raid gone awry. It's, it's one of those things that if you've ever lived in Philadelphia or had anything to do with the city, it is a central defining feature of modern Philadelphia, it, it, even a central defining feature of the 1980s. And if you know enough about it to know that it happened, it is still, at least to me, to this day, stunning that the rest of the country knows so little about it. It's known as the MOVE bombing because the target of the raid was a radical group called MOVE, M-O-V-E, men, women, and children who lived in a house on Osage uh, in West Philly. The police raid on the MOVE house lasted 18 hours. And it's called a bombing because it included a bomb. By the time it was over, 11 people, including five kids, were dead. 53 homes were destroyed. Another eight were damaged. All 61 homes were torn down. The Philadelphia Inquirer has, on the occasion of the anniversary, produced a short documentary about the move bombing. I want to show you just a brief little excerpt from that. At 5.30 this morning, warrants were to be served on the move members. So we uh, eventually took up a position in the rear of the 6200 block of Osage, nearest towards Cobb Creek Parkway. And we heard the police commissioner make an announcement. What did Commissioner Sambor say, do you know? He was telling him to come out. Could you hear him saying that? What did Demona say? Yeah, she was just arguing and stuff. What we intended to do was to create a diversion on the roof of the MOVE compound. That diversion was to pour a large amount of water onto the bunker itself to obscure the vision of anyone that may be inside the bunker and prevent them from seeing. We started down the alley. You got down the alley approximately 15 or 20 feet and the shooting started. And then we hit tear gas, which at that time wasn't supposed to be in a plan. So we had to stop and put our gas mask on. I had recommended that the best way to go was to use an explosive entry device to blow a hole in the roof so that we could insert gas in through the roof and that we intended to use a police helicopter, a state police helicopter. And what did you think was the fate of the children in terms of blowing a hole in the roof? Uh, my understanding was that uh, it would work and it would therefore be safe for the children. Uh, I did not have any notion whatsoever that anyone on that side would do anything that would endanger the children. Did you have any information or belief that there was any gasoline stored on the roof of 6221 Osage Avenue? I, I don't recall. I've heard that several times since. I don't recall having been told prior to that that there was gasoline stored on the roof. And then what happened? Huh? They were still up there, and then they came down. Everybody came down. All the men came down? That's when the big bomb went off. Did you hear the big bomb? It shook the whole house up. The house shake. We knew something had happened. It never, ever occurred to me that they had dropped a bomb on us. You know, we felt something, but I didn't know what it was. I saw Ramona come over the fence, and she had started to walk down, stop, and she would wave with her hand like this. And then on the driveway, I see, who was later identified as Birdie, come out of the fire. And he literally came through the smoke and the fire. And there was a board on fire there, and he, and he hopped over that, and he started coming down. So I had a shotgun. I said, Tommy, here, take my shotgun. I said, I'm going to go get the kid. At one point that I start out to get Bertie, and that's the first time I realized Officer Tersey was behind me. He grabbed my left shoulder. I said, don't go out there, Jim. It's a trap. I took my service revolver out. That's all I had at the time. I had a 357 Magnum. We're trying to say to him, son, come over here. Come over here. We're trying to get him to come to us. So I ran out, and I scooped him underneath his left arm. I'll never forget it. The first thing he said to me is, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. I was locked in on Officer Miller's face. My back's towards move. I'm praying that I'm not going to see a change of expression. And I made like a left to go out to Osage. He then started to say, say to me that I'm hungry. I want something to eat. I'm hungry. That's the part I have a hard time with, what this kid went through. I'm hungry. After we went through all that, I'm hungry. For me to explain things to certain people, um, that's my contact. And then later on, I found out there was other kids in there. 
And in essence, I was a brick wall away. So it's something. Now, honestly, do I think about move every day? No. But when it's brought up, it's like it happened yesterday. According to an investigation into the move bombing in 1986, the year after it happened, police gunfire did prevent people inside the house from escaping when the house was on fire. However, a state grand jury contradicted that move commission conclusion. Ramona Africa, the only adult to survive that day who you saw in that clip, she was charged with conspiracy, riot and assault. She served seven years in prison. But a few years after her release, she won a federal lawsuit against the city and was awarded a half million dollars. The 13-year-old Birdie, Bertie Africa. He went to live with his father. He was awarded a $1.5 million settlement with the city. To add tragedy to tragedy, Osage Avenue has still never recovered. The city promised owners of the 61 destroyed homes that their houses would be rebuilt by Christmas of that year. Instead, it took a year and a half. The two heads of the company hired by the city to rebuild the homes embezzled more than $200,000, for which they served jail time. There were leaky pipes, collapsed roofs, broken floors, blocked sewage systems, shoddy electrical work. Efforts to fix the homes were so expensive and futile that 37 of the 61 homes today have been bought by the city, boarded up, and left abandoned. Residents continue to battle the city for fair compensation after their neighborhood was bombed by the city, bombed 25 years ago today.